assalamu alaikum uh, this is dr nasir here from siag uh, today we are going to do this young male patient uh, 42 years old uh, he basically presented with the uh, to a private clinic with a complaint of uh, jaundice for the last uh, few days uh, his workup was done uh, they are initially showed that patient had deranged lfts predominant cholestatic lfts Uh, bilirubin of 7 and with alkaline phosphatase of uh, 342 so they were suspecting this patient that uh, <clears throat> he has uh, cbd stone and he was referred here for ercp so we are going to perform his erc as you can already see that uh, in the duodenum d2 uh, but we have i think uh, incidental finding that was missed on ultrasound and ultrasound is also not that much sensitive so you can appreciate that there is a bulge uh, very much uh, uh, protruding uh, bulgy ampulla uh, with nodular surface it looks like uh, this patient might not have uh, uh, cbd stone but it looks like a case of papillary adenoma you can appreciate the surface pattern uh, it does not show that uh, it uh, uh, will be a malignancy but mostly it uh, appearance are suggestive of papillary adenoma but uh, we will not be sure until and unless we have the biopsy report so we will do so our plan uh, is now changed from the cbd stone uh, so we are now more uh, looking towards the ampullary adenoma and our target will be to cannulate this patient after that we'll place the stent and take the biopsies so <clears throat> uh, now we'll cannulate this patient ampulla we are i'm looking around and finding the best place uh, because uh, an ampullary adenoma and especially ampullary carcinoma uh, there are various uh, small openings and the ampullary shape is somewhat distorted it is not like uh, that of a normal ampulla so you have to be careful uh, while cannulating so that you cannot uh, you will uh, unincidentally might develop uh, a false trick so now we'll try to see whether i can calculate it, cannulate this in uh, first go or not now this looks to me a better place uh, for the cannulation we'll see how it goes uh, now you can appreciate that i'm going from the downward and i will ask my assistant to just go on uh, the spinster tom so that my direction is towards the cbd you can appreciate that uh, it has moved easily uh, towards the cbd and now our wire guide wire because we uh, uh, mostly do our cannulation wire guide wire it Yeah, we do not use dye for confirmation of uh, CBD. We use basically guide wire. After that, we inject and confirm that we are in CBD. You can appreciate on the side uh, fluoroscopy image that our guide wire is already in, inside the CBD. Now we'll try <clears throat> to inject and see uh, whether we have uh, uh, this only ampullary adenoma finding <clears throat> or there is concomitant uh, CBD stone as well. so uh, i will not uh, try to do spinostomy in this patient uh, because already i uh, before uh, uh, i discussed it that uh, in a case of ampullary adenoma or malignancy we do not do spinostomy because it will <clears throat> uh, it will alter the management if this patient has ampullary adenoma and he is uh, endoscopically um, Uh, resectable so i will not try to uh, do this mastectomy i will just take the biopsies to confirm the diagnosis whether i have uh, ampullary adenoma or carcinoma after that uh, our next step in case of malignancy if it comes out that it is malignant then our next step will be to do this patient endoscopic ultrasound uh, to check whether this patient is endoscopically uh, treatable or not whether the, the the tumor is extending uh, inside the cbd and the pancreatic duct or it is localized uh, it is uh, not uh, extending from the muscular propria uh, in that case uh, we can do is endoscopic uh, uh, amplectomy in other case uh, uh, when the patient on ct scan or endoscopic ultrasound it shows that it is inside the cbd or pancreatic duct and then our plan will be to uh, ask the uh, epitopal resurgent to proceed for the vipal surgery now you can appreciate easily we can see there is a dilated duct massively dilated duct in case of so much dilatation uh, the dye does not completely fill because it is so much dilated when we do not want to uh, inject so much dye inside because of the chances uh, are there that my patient might develop cholangitis 
so I will not put more, more dye because already I have seen that the proximal duct is so much dilated and uh, now we will, our plan will be uh, to <clears throat> keep the spinster tom, uh, keep the guide wire inside now you can appreciate that I am just slowly slowly pulling back the spinster tom uh, and my assistant will keep the guide wire inside the CBD so this is a, another learning curve for uh, the trainees who are doing ERCP that uh, there should be a coordination between the technician and the endoscopist it is very important it is very important that the the technician and endoscopist are on the same line uh, one is pushing uh, the guide wire inside and i'm pulling back the spinstrotome our guide wire should be maintained on the same level uh, if we pull back the guide wire and uh, i'm not uh, i have not kept it inside we might lose the the cbd cannulation so it is very important now you can appreciate that now i am now I have uh, put back the uh, sensorotome and now I am pushing uh, the catheter, the guiding catheter. Uh, in, this is the guiding catheter, the black one you can appreciate. This is basically uh, placed inside and the CBD the, at the level where we want to uh, place our stent, the proximal uh, end of the stent. Now you can appreciate after some time you will see now uh, I will ask him to unlock the uh, <coughs> The the, uh, the 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 stent now we will release the stent and i will push the stent inside uh, so this is also another uh, coordination between the technician and endoscopist now you can see i'm pushing and the spinster tom uh, i'm pushing the stent inside and he's pulling back the guiding catheter so this is the same way like uh, already discussed uh, for the guide wire and spinster tom the same applies here for the stent placement the coordination is very much important now you can appreciate that i have almost uh, uh, place the stent inside the CBD now we will remove the catheter now you can appreciate that the already the bile is coming so nicely from the uh, CBD this was the ampullary adenoma likely uh, so we have placed the stent uh, uh, this will uh, hopefully resolve the patient jaundice the patient symptom uh, so the next uh, <clears throat> thing I will do is I will take the biopsies and I already have discussed that I will not do this patient's hysterotomy. It might uh, alter the, uh, the the further management of this patient if it comes out to be adenoma. So looks like uh, uh, more towards adenoma rather than malignancy. <clears throat> so this patient might be uh, a suitable candidate for endoscopic ampullectomy. So you can appreciate how well uh, the system is draining and uh, it is freely draining inside the Duodenum now will try to take the biopsy of <coughs> ampullary area, the nodular surface, and will send this uh, biopsies for uh, histological confirmation. Either we have ampullary denoma or we are dealing with malignancy. So this is a, a, also another <coughs> important thing that you, you should be targeting those areas where you find that it might be more. Uh, um, the, the patient might have <coughs> the biopsy will be positive. You have to target those uh, surface area which is more nodular uh, which, uh, which the pit pattern or the surface pattern looks like more distorted so it will have a high yield of uh, 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 the, the positivity rather than from the normal mucosal surface now you can appreciate that i am taking biopsies uh, from the uh, just above the stent where i find that it looks like more uh, nodular and uh, one important point <clears throat> as i already discussed with you that uh, you might uh, find something uh, this uh, type of incidental finding in your case because this patient was presented with the uh, suspicion of uh, cbd stone young male uh, deranged lft cbd show dilated cbd although it did not show the uh, cbd stone because the sensitivity of uh, ultrasound to detect uh, cbd stone is only 50 percent so this is this was basically an incidental finding a pleuridinoma it is all, almost most of the time it is missed uh, CT scan can appreciate it that there is a protrudent ambula but ultrasound does not have that much uh, capability to detect uh, whether the patient is having a pleuridinoma or periapillary carcinoma CT scan is a modality but we usually do not do CT scan in the first instance in which uh, uh, we have deranged LFTs although if the suspicion is high we are suspecting that this patient might have malignancy or ILR stricture, ILR growth. In that case, uh, we should go for CT scan <coughs> and MRCP uh, to find out uh, uh, how much uh, duct involvement is there for, uh, especially for the clark skin tumor. 
so in this case uh, you can uh, see because we are we were going for the cbd stone but we find out that this is, uh, likely this patient might have ampullary edema uh, so we will take biopsy and we will wait for the biopsy report if the biopsy report comes out to be positive uh, then we will further treat this patient according to that uh, you can see you can appreciate that this uh, bile is um, uh, draining very well from the the stent that we have placed and it was uh, discussed earlier that it was an incidental finding not uh, that we were going to do this patient uh, case like that we were suspecting that this patient might have a cbd stone but it turns out to be that uh, it is uh, basically a pleural adenoma that has caused this deranged lefties and patient symptoms uh, so hopefully this will be a, a good case for presentation and uh, you can appreciate uh, this uh, picture and it will be also a learning curve for the trainees as well uh, thank you very much uh, for watching this hopefully a biopsy report will come and share with you as well thank you